Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to the desert. It's raining, uh, which is not, I mean, Darian, you're from the desert. You know what? You know it's not supposed to be raining out here, right? Or is this yeah, normal? Sometimes. Well, sometimes. it's a very wet Saturday, but I'm joined by Eric Jones, driver of this week. It's the Irwin Tools Camry, which is actually very sharp. Uh, what is it about Power Tools paint schemes that just seem to always have the best, the best paint schemes? I mean, I, I don't know. Irwin's a good looking one. It's probably my favorite um, this year. The colors look really good. I, I guess it's a blue and yellow. Um, looks, looks almks a little slow purple. It's so deep, but uh, a good looking car, so I'm, I'm happy with For it. For sure. Definitely. Well, people who are watching at home know that I'm a big fan of yours, and so this is a truly, truly an honor from, a, from, my, from my perspective. Uh, first question I've always wanted to ask you, because my name is Eric, your name is Eric. I spell mine with a C, you're with a K. What do you think of Eric Almarola? What is he doing over there? <laughs> yeah, with an A? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people don't get my name right very often. Um, so I, I'm sure that no one ever gets his name right. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't it doesn't know. look like Eric. People are getting Denny's name wrong this week too, so it's just Denny a bad, Denny. a yeah. bad week for spelling, I bad, guess. Bad I just feel like he's trying too hard with it, but yeah, it, it, it's a good look for him. Yeah. He's got the cool logo and yeah. everything, but yeah, it works for out sure. with the double A. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Maybe that's what they were thinking. <laughs> well, I, I also want to ask you a little bit about kind of your roots in racing, because I'm, I've, you know, I you're young into the sport, you growing fan base for sure, but I feel like a lot of people maybe don't know how you got started or everything. Uh, so you, you started racing up north, right? When did you first start racing? Uh, just anything? What was your first race car? Yeah, I was. Uh, about seven years old when I actually got my first race car, you know, racing professionally uh, at that age. But I started racing quarter midgets out in Michigan and then uh, I started traveling pretty soon after that with quarter midgets around kind of the, the Midwest and a little bit on the East Coast and, and some down south. And, um, you know, from there kind of moved up. I was 12, I got into a, a street stock. Yeah. I raced at a local track in Michigan and next year moved up to late models and started traveling again, mostly around the Midwest and in that area. Um, so that's how I started, but yeah, seven years old. So it kind of the trend of drivers now, you know, getting started young and, and doing it. But uh, yeah, I wasn't from a racing family. My mom actually got us started in it. She uh -huh. was uh, reading a, a magazine article about quarter midget racing and uh, got us going in that. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, the story goes is kind of how you got started in NASCAR was Kyle Busch. You know, you beat him in the snowball derby that kind of caught you on his radar. How important because you started racing trucks for Kyle Busch, you won championship with them. How important has Kyle Busch and that relationship been to your growing NASCAR career? Yeah, it's been huge. Uh, you know, you're right. I, I'd met Kyle a little bit before that race in, in the snowball. Mm -hmm. um, I tested his car. That was a long story in itself, but I, I got to test his late model and down in Nashville, he was flying back and forth between Talladega uh, and Nashville for the All-American trying to run that. Yeah. I was in there filling in a little bit. And, and so I got to know him then and he was, um, you know, really nice and, and a fan of mine that weekend and then went on to the snowball and we were able to beat him there and that was the first real big opportunity I had. Uh, I didn't really have any opportunities before that, not in NASCAR, uh, with a good team. So really a big break for me and then, you know, staying with Kyle for the next couple of years after that, you know, getting over to Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, obviously with the Toyota connection, Kyle's connection, racing Xfinity over there and then on to the Cup Series. So he was pretty instrumental in my career, you know, getting me uh, an opportunity and at least a shot you know you gotta go out and make the most of it from there but he gave me that chance to go out and do something definitely last couple of years you've been with joe gibbs racing you've won a couple of races you won the clash that was obviously extremely exciting that was one of my favorite final two laps of any race i've ever seen it was a mess before that but that <laughs> yeah. that part was fun yeah. uh so this year you signed a one-year extension with joe gibbs racing uh, have you had any of those conversations yet about contract negotiations for next year and, and how difficult is it maybe to race with that level of, uh, of added uncertainty well, I think the only pressure that I put on myself is is from me, right? Mm -hmm. You know that you want to race for a living, you want to do well, you want to be successful, and well, obviously with Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, you know I have a great opportunity to go and do that. And we've we've won races the last few years, made the playoffs, which is great. Uh, but we haven't won, you know, I don't feel like enough. I mean, obviously last year our teammates were able to get, you know, four or five wins a piece, and and uh, Martin with uh, seven or eight, I believe. Yeah, so, like that. Uh, um, you know, he obviously had a great year and we want to be on that same level. We want to go out and be able to win four or five races a year. And that's obviously a, a big jump, right? That's where you kind of, you make that step. You know, I feel like we, we can definitely win a race or two, uh, but winning those those multiple races a year is the goal and, and, and what we want to be. So um, you know, I think we all want to run well this year. Chris wants to run well, I want to run well. And uh, you know, we haven't gotten any of those discussions yet with JGR. I've had you know, a great relationship with him now mm -hmm. for, um, since 2000. 17 if you count my year with furniture row uh i've been you know involved with jgr so i want to keep that relationship going you know coach and i have become really close and it's just going to be a matter of going out and running well and doing our job this year
Definitely. I've been a big fan of yours ever since, I mean, I've started following you in the trucks, but obviously Xfinity, one of the things that always stood out to me about you is, felt like around 2016, every weekend it was really, you were the only guy that I feel like could run with Kyle Busch yeah, on a regular yeah. basis, especially the only Xfinity regular, so I was always, that. that's when I first took notice. Uh, so this has been really great to talk to you. I had one final question, actually. Sure. Uh, next year, you know, NASCAR's rumored schedule changes for 2021, some possible big changes. You might have inside information, I'm not going to ask you for inside information, <laughs> but are there any tracks specifically, you come from a short track background, are there any tracks specifically that you would like to see added to the Cup Series schedule next year? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities to go to places, right, and mm -hmm. um, they haven't really told us anything yet. I mean, next, I guess two months, we're really supposed to have all the information. I think they're still in talks with kind of some of the schedule changes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like the direction we've been going this year with the double header at Pocono and, yeah. and some of that stuff I think is great, moving in the right right, right direction. Um, the tracks I'd like to go to, I mean, obviously Nashville's the big talk right now. Yeah, That would be a Trendy. cool track, yeah. Uh, Toledo Speedway is really cool uh, up in Ohio. That's always uh, been one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, I can name off short tracks all day that I like. <laughs> Winchester Speedway up in Indiana is an awesome track. Just keep name dropping. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cool places that we could go. Pensacola, obviously, we've seen mm. the K&N cars there for the last few years. So. I was up at Slinger last uh, last year. I know yeah. that's probably Slinger's not cool. going to run a cup race there anytime soon, but that a lot of great yeah. short tracks up in the Midwest. Yeah, Midwest has got a lot of great places, yeah. and, and so just down south. So there's some connections there, too, with NASCAR and, and opportunities to go there. It's just a matter of, you know, if it really fits and if we can make it work. But uh, I think there would be some great racing for sure if we could go there. Definitely. Yeah, a lot of exciting things in the works for NASCAR and exciting things for you in your career as well. Thank you for, uh, for joining us on the show today. Had a great time. Hopefully stay dry. And tomorrow could be a really fun race. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Appreciate it.